okay over to center number 1041 the question is this if suppose there are two researchers at uh, different two places and one is proposing some mechanism or some methodology or some formula at one place and another one is also proposing the same or almost same formula at the another place they do not know who is just going to propose the same formula and first one has submitted the paper to one journal and another one has submitted the paper to the another journal the first has been published and an another journal has delayed who will be given the credit that whose work is uh, there and uh, the credit will who will get the credit for that sir okay so uh, the answer to that question is that both of them will get the credit provided they have both uh, uh, been sincere about not stealing each other's idea and further question on this is somewhat off topic so we'll move on so center number 1043 ah uh, sir uh, uh, you answered one uh, question regarding the plagiarism free software sites or websites so actually it is a very difficult problem for we mentors as well when our pg students write a thesis or paper to address the question so if you can guide that uh, where we can find out such sites so that so before submitting our paper also if we can go through that uh, uh, whether the contents are uh, safe or not then obviously it will solve a problem at a bigger level okay so this question actually has been addressed two times once in the plagiarism session and once earlier and we have to differentiate between two scenarios one scenario where you are an instructor and you have to look at your students thesis or your students papers and check if the students have plagiarized in that case you would need to know which these softwares are and how to use them and which are freely available and so on so we are really not the best people to give you advice on that and it's also not on topic for this conference the second point is more on topic that how do you know that your own paper has been plagiarized or not and the answer there is you don't need a software to do that you have to follow the guidelines of correct paraphrasing of quoting of citing and so on so when you're writing your paper when you're reporting your results you follow ethical guidelines and that will ensure that you haven't committed plagiarism so you should not have to use a software on your own paper okay over to center number 1063 good evening sir if the idea idea the proposal is not submitted or selected then can a paper be sent directly for te4 we have scaffolded your entire uh, journey for writing a paper for te4e into several steps so you started with the pre workshop that you are talking about the idea proposal assignment and there's another study planning template that you will do now so i think that if you sincerely do all of these there's a very high chance that you will be among the top 200 and you will get some mentoring especially if you've sincerely uh, used all the techniques that we have applied and done it however if it's not please do go ahead and submit it this is just one way of you know mentoring people through the process so let me also add that it may happen for even genuine reasons that you don't have the time to follow our schedule but if you follow the templates that are given it will help you in your submission so there is it's not binding that a t4e submission should go through this route it's desirable because it will help you improve the chances of the paper that's all but please go ahead and submit over to center number 1056 i'm jyoti from 1056 remote center good evening sir here i want to ask you that whenever i want to publish any paper in a journal for the conferences what are the parameters i need to consider about the journal whether it is a good journal or a bad journal or it is a mm -hmm. uh, impact factor and all mm -hmm. what are the parameters i need to consider to send a paper to them okay okay so the answer to that is that as you write the paper you will discover which is the right journal to send your paper to so the first step is so when you do your related work prior work and when you do your positioning if you find that all your prior work is published in one type of journal that means that is the good journal for you okay so there is no uniform or universal answer to this question so typically you want to publish in a forum where other people who are working on similar ideas are publishing so you don't want to go and publish in some completely off topic forum because the chances of your paper getting rejected there are higher so as you do your 
prior work search as you go through the references in the papers that you are reading that is how you will come to know which are the good journals, which are the uh, journals where the top quality papers are appearing and now that you know how to analyze. So, moment you see a strong paper the next thing that you must note is which journal or which conference has this paper appeared in and it should kind of register in your mind that this looks like a good journal. Let me just add one more point to that. Uh, this is specific to educational technology. So, as you are doing your literature survey, you can start making a list of the journals in which the relevant papers are appearing. But we also started off with a small list which is there in the video that has already been posted on Moodle. I think this is the one on uh, how to do the literature review uh, video. You can take a look. This is five of the most common journals that uh, educational technology papers are published in. So, you can go and look at the table of contents there in those journals and see if your paper is a good fit. That is another starting point for you. Okay, over to 1088. Uh, so, I intend to ask that uh, how to go about finding the exact prior work related to, uh, related to our idea through research paper and uh, next is how much prior work is uh, required, how to decide that, I mean uh, it is kind of still not clear in my mind. Okay, uh, how to uh, find prior work is already answered in the slides that you look at the databases and look at uh, send email to the authors find the prior work. Okay. How to decide that you have looked at enough prior work? So, that is again something that is does not have a universal answer. What you have to do is you have to keep looking till most of the papers that you find are the same ones that you have already found. Okay. So, till you find that okay, there are on, looks like there are only these 10 works and in you have also covered most of the top uh, conferences or journals. So, then you can sort of be assured that at least in the important forum there is no prior work. So, there may be still there may be prior work, but what you can say is I have looked at this these journals for the last 5 years and I have not found anything and that is usually sufficient for a referee to believe whether there is prior work or not. Okay, over to 1001. Yes, we talked about plagiarism. Uh, so, if we are paraphrasing that is plagiarism, if we are copying that is also plagiarism, if we are summarizing that is also plagiarism. But most of the papers that we are writing, the research papers we are writing, we are taking most of the things from the other papers. The only thing that is new there is our idea. So, I just wanted to ask what is the level of plagiarism that is acceptable in any research paper? Okay. So, uh, your first sentence, you said that I agree with part of it that if you are copying something that is plagiarism. We did not we didn't agree that uh, if you are paraphrasing something it is plagiarism or if you are summarizing something it is plagiarism. In fact, the, most of the times when you are reporting prior work you have to summarize and the question the point of the whole session was how to differentiate between a summary which is acceptable and a copy. Uh, quoting or copying you can do occasionally, paraphrasing do it when it is required when you really have to report say results of another paper, uh, another paper that you have to report in your prior work and most of the other times you will be doing the summary. So, that is in fact something you should be doing. Over to 1256. Good evening sir, how to prepare a thesis statement whether it is consisting of the novel idea only or else uh, should I climb the total literature survey and the applications and uh, the total theory information. So, your question is about uh, PhD thesis is that what you are asking? Yeah, PhD thesis. Okay, so uh, again this is uh, even though it is a good question it is actually a little bit off topic and, and uh, there is a very long answer for this. So, please post it on Moodle and uh, we will guide you through that. Is there any other question at the center? So, the uh, let me just attempt to give a very short answer to it. Novelty is is one of the things, but in a PhD thesis what is really looked for is soundness and rigor in the thesis itself. So, when you are starting out to do a PhD, what you want to look at is positioning more than novelty. Over to center number 1173. 
good evening sir uh, i have got an over idea about the idea proposal and various stages of uh, submitting the research proposal i would like to know uh, is there any significant difference in the method for applying it to the management education topic okay so this is also a little bit off topic because we are not dealing with management uh, here as we had stated right in the beginning however the methods are applicable it's because these methods are pr primarily based on lo logic and scientific inquiry so they are applicable but then you will have to use slightly different versions of the methods for management students or for social science uh, studies what you have to pay attention to regardless of the domain is whether your content or your strategy is addressing the questions of the domain whether your tests are consistent with what is asked in the domain and so on so the part about content validity holds regardless of the domain but how exactly you do it might differ from one domain to another over to center number 1269 hello uh, my question is uh, there is a high likelihood that there will be a, uh, influence of post test Based on the pretest, so is there any technique how we isolate those influences? Pretest on post. Between the influence of post-test uh, and pretest. Okay, so I think what you mean is, will there be an influence of the pretest on the post-test because the pretest is coming before, and in fact there is some truth to this. It, it there is a uh, there is a problem. There could be a problem. that since the pretest is given to the participants they get sensitized to the types of questions or they start thinking more about uh, the the topic and it's only because they saw the pretest that's why they did well on the post test so this is in fact a known problem in educational research and uh, it's a little difficult to get into how to address this in one line or so so what we'll do is we'll post a slightly more detailed reply to this on the moodle forum um i think i'll leave it at that for this moment so since there were a couple of questions on the effect of the pretest there is one small suggestion that i can add at this point if you remember the recall uh, the research designs from the morning we only talked about a single group pre and post test and if you have only one group then the effect of the pretest can happen on the post test and so on however if you have two groups and then do a pre and post for one and only have a post for the other there is a research design it's a slightly more complex research design that's why we didn't bring it earlier but it is possible to control for the effects or at least to explain the effects if you repeat the experiment with a group that doesn't have a pretest and see how they perform uh yeah so it it is possible to have multiple groups to address this effect of the pretest okay so uh, we don't have any more uh Uh, queries we will attempt to address some of the chat queries in the meantime we will just go to some few centers to see what are you doing and uh, 1012 would you like to ask a query there seem to be a large number of people in 1012 so it appears that most of 1012 queries have got sorted out locally itself which is a good thing we can see that people are there are people and they are all alert and smiling so that's a good thing So now there is a query from one two eight three. Actually, uh, sir, we want to know some uh, available ET tools actually uh, for effective learning. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What do you mean by ET tools? Repeat. Ah, uh, for effective learning, actually, you sh you told na some virtual labs and all. So that's why just I want to know some specific tools. because there is no general uh, tools as far i know so that is why suppose for mathematics uh, higher mathematics like that so okay. what kind of okay. what kind of tools are available okay so uh, the there are not it's not a very structured area what are the tools so typically people look for some kind of a visualization visualization is usually the first tool that we look for when we want to explain some concept which we find that our students are finding difficulty in understanding so uh, one of the places that you could look in is 
what is called the national mission on education through ICT. So, if you just google for NMEICT national mission that is India's national mission on education through ICT, there are large number of projects which are creating various types of tools like visualizations, virtual labs, remote labs. So, usually these are the tools that we use for uh, explaining concepts which students find difficult to uh, visualize. Okay. So, we will just look at a few queries which are in, in chat and one of the queries is uh, should we stick to the procedure given in this discussion today for writing our paper? Can we use any other idea which is different than that given by you? So, the answer to that is yes, you are free to use any other idea, any other template, any other form of presenting your work. So, the key thing that a referee looks for is logical sequencing of your ideas. So, as long as you present your ideas in a logical and understandable manner, you are free to use any other template. Uh, there is a chat query saying that you did not hear the answer to the question what to do if the class strength is 11 for example, for PG classes. So, since this was important and since you said that uh, you uh, could not hear the answer, let me just try to answer this question again. There, it, it does happen sometimes that the only students that we have in our classes is a small number and we do want to ask some important research questions and we do want to try to conduct a research study. So, the model that we talked about earlier this morning about a two group pre and post test or two group post test is not the most suitable one if your class strength, the total class strength is 11. What you can do in such a case is look for more details rather than more numbers. So, what I mean here is use triangulation, firstly get a large number of data sources. You can look at their quiz marks, you can do a questionnaire, you can do one more uh, post test at the end. So, you have repeated measures for the same number. So, even though your number of students is small, your number of data points will start becoming larger. And if all these data points are addressing the same question, then in, in one sense you are trying to increase the number of data points here. The other thing you can do is within these types of data, you can analyze them such that you look at, you look very carefully into the type of answers that the students have written. So, rather than asking them multiple choice questions, give them a descriptive question and try to look for where they display good conceptual understanding, where they display problem solving skills, analyze their diagrams and since you have a small number, you can do all of this and you can give open descriptive questions and analyze them in great detail. Over to center number 1057. So, my question is, uh, research, uh, research in this field is uh, valid for technical people? Research in the field is uh, valid for uh, technical people? So, I have already answered this question saying that I do not know and you will have to check with the college that you are working for whether they will accept it for validity or not. So, there is no single answer to that. Okay, it appears that many of you have uh, already we have already addressed many of your uh, queries and the others as and when they come up we can address them on the uh, Moodle and other offline forum. There was a question on the chat on what is a rubric. Uh, rubric is actually a way it is a measurement tool it is one of the instruments that you can use when you want to give detailed feedback to the student or when you want to try to score somebody's solution in a more precise way. So, what happens when we have a, uh, when we have a solution, let us say an open, a solution to an open problem is sometimes we give marks, we give it 3 out of 10 or we give it 7 out of 10 and in our minds we have some description, some indicator of what a 3 means and what a 7 means. What a rubric does is actually formalizes the scheme, the scoring scheme and makes it more systematic. So, before you start scoring or grading open descriptive answers, what we do is we write down what does it mean if we give a score of 3, what does it mean if we give a score of 2, what does it mean if we give a score of 0 and so on and we write descriptive indicators of the performance corresponding to each of these numbers. 
then when we actually try to score or grade the problem, we simply match whether this person's solution fell into the category of 3 or 2 or 1, because we already have the same description for each of those levels. Now, a rubric is a very good way of, sol of uh, scoring open problems, because you have a systematic tool at your hand that you can use. Okay, so uh, if there are no more queries, we'll just wait for one minute. It's uh, 5:20, so if anybody wants to request for the floor, this is a good time, and uh, we'll just give you a minute to see whether That's there is anything. Ha. Huh. So there is. In the meantime, there is a good question on the chat forum. There's a question on the chat forum that says, "How to cite a review paper? Because again, it's a collection of other papers." And this is an important question because we have to take the decision whether we cite only the review paper or whether we cite the original papers that came in the review paper. So my suggestion here is that cite only those papers that you have actually read. Otherwise, what you would be doing is, suppose uh, in today's example, where you were supposed to paraphrase a paragraph from Felder's paper, the first sentence said that, According to Carl Jung, so such and such things happened. If you are trying to paraphrase Felder's paraphrase of Jung, there's a large chance, there's a high chance that something you won't be able to get the correct idea. So if you have read Jung's paper, do say this is what Jung said. Otherwise, what you can do is quote the review paper and say that in this review paper, the author has summarized the work of somebody else and then do your own summary. So you're doing a summary of, of the summary, which is OK. But don't quote the original paper until you have actually read it. OK, then. Uh, we have not had any more uh, uh, requests for interaction. So we hope that this workshop has been useful to all of you or many of you. And you will go ahead and uh, submit. So here is one last query for interaction. So let me just one two five seven one two five seven. Yeah, please go ahead. Can we use any non? Uh, can we use any non-parametric statistical tools for uh, uh, um, measuring the novelty of a paper? I have no idea how to. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by using a statistical technique to measure the novelty. Uh, okay, the answer here to your direct question is I don't know. The second part of the answer is it's better to establish novelty according to the guidelines that we have been talking about for the last 10 days, that use available literature, use prior work, find out the gaps, analyze the prior work, and from the gaps establish the novelty of the paper. So try not to use any form of statistics to establish the novelty of your paper. However, if your question is should we use non-parametric tests at all, then you have to read a data analysis book to see when you should use non-parametric tests and when you should use parametric tests. So that's a completely different question. But since you didn't ask that question, I won't answer that question. So now that we got up to uh, wind up the session, people are asking queries. So I'll just take one more. This is center number 1131. Hello, sir. I'm ma'am. On behalf of all the RMET participants, I want to thank you all. We have clarified many more concepts and will assure that we will participate in T4E conference also. Thanks very much for your support. That's really good to hear. And the best way we can get your thanks is actually if you submit assignments and submit good assignments so that we, we can actually go ahead with the process of doing the mentoring and the further uh, paper writing process. So I think we should wind up with that. Yeah. yeah. So thanks a lot for that. And keep in mind, there are two more things to do before the certification. One is the post-test and the survey and the submission of the study planning uh, template assignment. And then the rest of the journey will continue. Hope to see many of you in T4E 2013. Bye.